The New York Giants are in a little bit of trouble. The last night they lost to Washington 30-29. And it wasn't all bad for New York, obviously. Daniel Jones had one of the better games of his career. Didn't have any turnovers, which is a good start for Daniel Jones. Uh, Saquon Barkley had a couple big plays, not as many explosive plays as we were hoping for. And it looked a little bit less ex- well, explosive. It looked less explosive than what we're used to from him, but obviously coming back from the ACL injury, it takes a bit of time. Not everyone's Adrian Peterson. Not everyone comes back and is ready to play right away. But there's a lot of takeaways from this game. And a lot of it's small stuff. Some of it's larger things. Uh, there, honestly, there's not a lot of positivity at all, to be honest. Washington doesn't deserve a ton of credit either because they made all plenty of mistakes themselves. But I do want to talk about some of the issues the Giants had in particular. Uh, starting out with Joe Judge being obviously a former special teams coordinator, the disciplinarian coach, and then Leonard... I know Dexter Lawrence jumps off sides on the first field goal attempt for the game winner for Washington at the end of the game, and it obviously is missed. But they get another shot because Lawrence was offside, so move it up five yards, Washington kicks it, and they win the game. That does not look good when your head coach is a former special teams coordinator and disciplinarian, when one of your best players in Dexter Lawrence, and he is one of the best players in the New York Giants, probably top five on that team, jumps off sides. A pivotal moment in the game from a position where it's not even going to make a huge impact. I understand sometimes you can get the blocks with your one hand from the interior. I've seen it happen before, but it happens at such a low frequency that why would you even risk jumping off sides and getting penalized like that? So bad play. Bad play on a team that's supposed to have good special teams, supposed to have a very disciplined approach to football, and you didn't see a lot of that last night. And that's one thing. A second thing I guess you could mention is Saquon Barkley's lack of true burst through the hole, I guess you'd say. Uh, I thought, where's that one play where he's running down silent, he had like a 41-yard gain, and Montez Sweat is staying, not Montez Sweat, Chase Young's staying with him the whole way, running behind him. Granted, Chase Young is a fantastic athlete, but the Saquon Barkley we saw two, three years ago is a guy who would have run by, actually probably taken that, the distance, probably gotten the speed to hit that angle and beat out the defensive back and (laughs) stay ahead of Chase Young. So Saquon Barkley obviously working his way back slowly into being the player he was before this, still a very good player as a running back, but no longer, at least not for the time being, one of those top five running backs in the league because he's lacking that super extreme alien-like athleticism we saw from him early in his career. He's probably going to get that back. It just takes a long time to get through this whole process of healing, recovery, and getting back to 100%. Another takeaway, the Giants hit five field goals. I understand not all those were chip shots. I think the long was a 55-yarder, so I understand that this wasn't the Giants settling for field goals in every possession. But in a game you lose by one point and you hit five field goals, that's, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> that's on you. That's in your offense. That's on your inability to finish drives. And I think Jason Garrett had some good play calling early in the game. I really think he, do, I really think he did. Uh, obviously, the Giants scored in their first possession after a very good, strong defensive stand to open the game. So it was a very good from the onset. And it just kind of faded over time. It got worse and worse as the game went on. And everything's gonna, everyone's going to talk about this, and they should. The Giants intercepted Hitler Haneke and probably should have ended the game. Right around Washington's 20-25 yard line, somewhere in there. And they said they settled for a field goal. That put them up by two. And then Washington goes down and wins the game. And this is after, mind you, Washington had a couple big plays and scored very quickly on the New York defense. So New York knew Washington was capable of moving the ball on them quickly because they had been doing it. They had recently done it. And instead of going in for the win, potentially, they end up kicking a field goal. They, I understand they drained the timeouts for Washington. I get that. I understand it was play clock. It was managing the game clock. But you were only up by two points and after all of that, and you still gave them two minutes. And that's just unacceptable. That's bad coaching. That's bad situational coaching. And it's an inability to execute and take full advantage of something that should have given you the win. And credit to Washington for coming back and taking full advantage of New York's critical mistakes down the stretch. We're at a point, oh yeah, Nick Gates is injury. That's very unfortunate. Gates, obviously, team captain. You know, they kicked him out to guard for this game. He ends up basically, broke, it looked like a broken leg on the, on the replay. I think, it was, I think it was the fractures that they're officially ruling it as. But it looked pretty horrendous when you go back and watch it. His legs kind of flopping around. It's very sad to see someone like that. I was very excited to be a captain of this team to see him go down so early in the season. Obviously, the Giants are going to have to shuffle around their offensive line again, but they kind of already been doing that to some extent. You know, hopefully, no more serious injuries like that.
Uh, unfortunately for Nick Gates, hopefully he makes a full recovery and is able to come back and play a high level again next year. But right now, I mean, there's just so many, so many negative takeaways from what we saw last night. The only positive takeaway I can say is that Daniel Jones look, well, didn't even turn the ball over. That's basically all I can go for. Uh, everything else is kind of up in the air. James Bradbury, of course, had that interception late in the game, which was fantastic for him. The other thing is, though, he got beat most of the night by Terry McLaurin, so your top cornerback, one of the best corners in the league last year, got beat like a drum most of the night by Terry McLaurin. That's not good either. And frankly, I think their, their defense, their secondary in particular, was laying off of wide receivers a little bit too much. I understand didn't allow many big plays downfield, but at the same point, they're giving you so much room to operate underneath against guys like Terry McLaurin. And you have one player with J.D. McKissick, and he's being carried up, up the field by a linebacker on the sideline. J.D. McKissick is a running back that has the skills of a wide receiver and the speed of one. And he ends up getting a big play there that really sets Washington on a quick drive for them. So just a lot of coverage things, I think, that were uh, problematic for the Giants. They didn't get a ton of pass rush either, in my opinion, because they don't. the scheme they play is so, so strange. Because you don't have a ton of true pass rushers on the field at any point in time. Leonard Williams... Led the team in sacks last year. Leonard Williams only has one year in his career with more than 10 sacks. I think his previous career had before that seven and a half, and he only did that once. So Leonard Williams is not a sack artist. You're not going to get that production every year from him. You need to surround him with guys, smaller guys on the edge who can rush the passer. I know Aziz Ojolari had a sack very early in that game. I think it was the only sack and the only pressure he recorded all night. So the Giants right now, not a great pass rush. Fairly solid run defense. The Pass coverage was just a little bit too light for my liking, too far back. You know, gave you too much, gave them too much room to operate underneath. They really had no answers for Washington at different points throughout the game. You could certainly tell in certain drives Washington was going, just going to go score because the Giants defense was not holding anything back. But again, they had their moments where they were good. It just did not happen consistently enough. And on offense, you know, Jonathan Allen has two sacks. Monte Sweat has a sack. The guys were getting Daniel Jones with some frequency. But Washington's defense was, is not nearly as good right now as we anticipated they would be. They're not nearly as good right now as they were last year. So there's some concerns there for Washington as well. But after watching this Giants game, you know, Kenny Galladay yelling at Daniel Jones on the sideline. Galladay, obviously a former star player with the Lions, signed a big contract with the Giants. Was targeted, I think, eight times and only had three catches this, this past night. They didn't have a lot of receptions in week one either. You know, it's... <laughs> It's at that point where this team feels very much like it's in disarray. I don't really know if they're ready to accept where they are as a franchise. Daniel Jones is a good quarterback. Well, not good quarterback. A decent quarterback. A starting caliber quarterback on the low end of the spectrum. But he's not going to be good enough to really win you a Super Bowl. This defense is solid, but it's not fantastic. And it's just at that point where the Giants are such a middle ground team. I understand a middle ground team can probably make the playoffs in the NFC East because of how weak that division is as a whole. But it's just, I don't see it happening. They're not going to beat Washington. They're probably, they're definitely not going to beat Dallas at this rate. But Dallas is fully healthy on offense. And I, I think the Giants are in real trouble here because they don't have any kind of fantastic one individual unit on this team right now. And frankly, the coaching has not blown me away either. You know, the mistakes that you're not supposed to be making because of the coaching staff you have on hand, you're still making those mistakes. You kicked five field goals and lost by one point. Of course you're going to lose by one point. You kicked five field goals. It's just that point where I think the Giants are a solid team that can upset almost any team in the NFL at any point in a season. But I would never bet on them to go on a hot streak. I would never bet on this team right now to go out and win five or six games in a row. I would not bet on them to make the playoffs or even make a dent if they made the playoffs because of how they're structured, because of how they're performing. And maybe by the time we hit week five or so, this whole thing will be gelled together better. They'll have a better idea what they're doing. Maybe they'll get more production from the second, third year guys, even the rookies as they step up and become more confident with what they're doing. But for right now, the Giants are just not, not a team that's going to be competing to make the playoffs this year.